Hello guys and welcome back to another M Creator tutorial. So today what we're going to be covering is the basic foundations of Forge Energy and Forge Fluid. It's not too much different from each other so if you learn one you'll learn the other and it's pretty much the exact same thing. So uh, the first thing that it will require is a block of some sort. So you're going to need a block. Uh, this will vary depending on what the use of this block is. So obviously the procedure is going to be a little bit different uh, based to what your needs are. Uh, your needs are, but um, you know it's it's up to you how you want to actually design the script. Uh, but I will be covering the fundamental parts for the block that you need first. So basically, what you have here is just a basic block. Um, nothing else is really required on this page except for the textures. Uh, moving on, um, nothing really required here to be changed. Uh, you can change whatever pages that you want up until I say something that is needed. So again, um, you will probably need a tick update. So I suggest setting this to 1 or 10 or something like that somewhere in the, in the middle. Usually it's around 10 that it's set to for block updates such as um, fences and stuff like that. That's about half a second but uh, in some cases like if you want to transport things faster then you would probably want to set this to one tick. Um, if it's naturally generation though then what you want to do is you want to actually have it on a random tick. Uh, by checking this box and it will tick randomly but it will be very far between per se but it will update if the st if it's in the structure and stuff all right with that being said let's move on to the block entity you will need this enabled uh, in order to have forge energy working you don't necessarily need an inventory um, but you can leave all this other stuff enabled if you want to it's not really required but um, the only thing that we actually need to use this for is the uh, forge energy and stuff like that. If you read the um, last line here, it says block that has fluage or energy storage. So this is basically what this uh, checkbox needs to be in order to move on to the next one. So fluid and energy storage, we have a few different options here. Um, basically, if you want to enable energy for it, for your block then you would check this box uh, the internal energy basically means that the uh, how much energy when the block is actually placed where your maximum uh, energy capacity is how much the block can actually store and the maximum receive and extract uh, or basically how much the block can uh, send and it receive so <clears throat> These vari variables will vary depending on how much energy you actually want to send with your um, actual procedures and stuff like that. So you might want to set this or just leave it for now. Uh, the other option is uh, energy fluid. You can have both of these enabled for both energy and fluid. So both of these are optional, but uh, you can configure them however you want. Uh, maximum fluid capacity, again, very similar to the uh, total storage, so you can set it to 8,000 or whatever value you need. And then restrict as accepted fluid. So basically, if this is empty, then it will accept any type of fluid. If it's, a, if it's selected for a certain one or your custom fluid, then it's only going to accept those specific types of fluid. So say if we wanted to only al allow lava, then we would basically add lava to this per particular uh, list here. So that's basically that. And moving on to triggers. Now, if you're going to have a block that needs to send energy or it generates it or something like this, this will basically vary depending on what you need. Um, I have covered a lot of other tutorials on how to make cables and stuff like that. Uh, for energy so basically what the foundational part is is basically sending it passively to the next block which means um, if the block can accept any amount of energy if it has space out of the capacity of the energy or fluid then we want to basically try to get that amount and then try to send it over there so you don't really use receiving so much as you are trying to send it. 
Uh, this is the general way for how forge energy and forge fluid works. So we can do that by using an update tick. Uh, this will work fine. We'll have all the dependencies that we need. There's obviously other ways that you can do it. There's tons of different other triggers and stuff like that, but uh, update is probably the easiest and most reliable for sending things automated. So you'd basically set a procedure and depending on what kind of block it's for, now by what kind, I mean, is it a power generation one? Uh, obviously you're going to need to generate power uh, from basically air. If it's going to generate power, you might have certain conditions. Maybe it's uh, something like it requires fuel in order to do it, or maybe liquid or something like that. Then you would basically create your condition for what the requirement is. And then you would basically generate energy to the block that it currently is at. So basically this block that we're creating, if it was a generator, we would be applying that energy to this block. Um, and then lastly, what you would do is you would try to send it on one of the sides of the block or if it has a connection, specific connection point, then you would basically try to send it to that side based on the block's rotation. So that's basically the general consensus of how Forge Energy works. You'll be passively trying to send it. Um, other things that you might come across is energy usage. Maybe it's a machine or something like that. Then it's going to require the energy in order to work. So basically if it has the energy, then you're going to test if it basically can has the requirements. Maybe it's like an auto furnace or something like that. Then you would basically have it smelt a whole bunch of ore or something like that. If it's in a slot, then it would put out into a output slot where you can actually grab it from. So this would just basically require energy and you would basically turn it into um, allow the machine to run with that energy and then consume it. Uh, Cables are a little bit different. They both receive and basically send energy. I have covered how to do that. I've actually have a tutorial and example workspace for cables that you can use uh, that I've designed from scratch. So I will link that in the description so you guys can make your own cables. Uh, currently they're only for forge energy, but I do plan on adding fluid support at once as well. So Let's cover the first step, which is basically generating the energy. Generally, what you would need to do is test for a condition, like I said. So you'd have some sort of condition, which is just your if statement. Maybe it's a solar panel. Maybe we just want to test if it is day in the provided world. Uh, we can do that by testing is day in provided world. And then we can basically generate the power. Now obviously you can get more creative based on the uh, raining and thundering probabilities. We could actually create a whole bunch of different combinations. We might do that right now. So maybe it's also raining and clear and maybe just thundering. So what we would do is we would make a few different if statements like that. And then what we would do is we would basically add uh, and statements and from there what we would need to do is add our blocks for thundering and raining now these are two different things uh 1.18 they have changed a little bit so there's four conditions compared to um the three that there was before but basically it's just going to alternate between the different combinations which they can happen so for example, we might have the last one not accept any, or it's not raining or thundering, which would be clear. And then maybe it is thundering, but not raining. So that would be a middle condition. And then maybe it's raining, but not thundering. So basically this would be thundering and raining, which is basically when you see the clouds and stuff get really dark. So you basically generate the power based on what condition those are met. Now that's generally how I make the solar panels. It's pretty efficient that way. Uh, to do that, what you would do is go to forge en or energy and fluid tanks, and then you basically go ahead 
and you need to create a local variable actually first. We're just gonna call this test. And what this will do is it will allow us to get the capacity of the tank and basically assign how much we can actually send. So we can actually test uh, sending. So basically if we want to test how much we can actually send into this particular blocks, capacity then we want to test for it and we might want to test for a specific number or we might want to test for the capacity of how much this block has and then test if the another block could actually send it we will get into that part in a little bit but we want to actually see if we can fill up this tank so we're just going to use a static number of 100 and then what we would do is we would go ahead and apply that to our variable so we'll put the variable say here so we can actually just run this so we're going to test if the same block which is this coordinates here of any direction because we don't really care about the direction at the moment and we're just going to test if it can accept 100 energy so basically whatever value that it returns so if it can only say accept like 99 energy then this variable is going to turn to 99. So it won't be that full 100, it's just going to return the energy amount that it can actually send. So that's handy for when we actually need to send the energy. So instead of, you know, basically um, just adding a static amount, which could go over the cap, then what we would do is we would replace this value with the amount that we want to actually send. So, that would be under the variables and then we would just basically assign the value to our variable now for using this method then we might want to adjust how much we can actually send the energy with so maybe if it's raining and stuff like that then we might want it to 100 or if we want to basically go ahead and set the amount for if it's only uh, raining or thundering then we might want to set this to like 200 it's just a ballpark of how much we want to try sending but it will vary depending on how much we can actually send obviously but uh, the maximum that it can send is going to be 200 and then maybe the last one what we want to send is like 400 for if it's sunny and or, or not thundering and not raining. So we would basically do something like that. That would be the general generation of the energy. So that's basically how you passively generate something. Uh, the only thing that you really need to worry about is these two blocks right here. And basically anything for your conditions and stuff will just vary depending on how you set it up. So then we need to actually send it. So basically if you're sending a particular energy then what you're going to do is you're going to run the exact same idea but it's going to be outside of your condition so basically if you have like maybe an on and off state you might want to test for another condition and see if it's on or off and then basically sending but in this case what we want to do is we want to test to see if we can actually send 200 to um, we'll say we'll we'll test for the block above so if the block above is uh, able to accept 200 energy so if we want to if the block above can send 200 energy then what we're going to do is we're going to send that if it's going to return nothing then it's just not going to send this now we need to actually send the amount to the block so we would update where we're sending it as well so we're already testing for the block above we would need to also test if there is a block there uh, for sending it. Uh, there are other blocks that you can basically set up. So is can block at location uh, receive energy. So you would want to set this up. So maybe uh, for more efficient manner, you would probably set the direction. So you'd probably have like six directions here and you would test for the conditions based on that. So Obviously, there's more efficient ways that require a lot more math, but basically this is what you would end up doing for testing if you can actually send the energy. And then you have your different sides for basically that. Um, this, any direction is optional. It doesn't really require a specific direction, especially with your own mod. 
Um, generally, M Crater doesn't utilize this particularly, so it's not too much different. And obviously, if you're generating fluid, it's the exact same story. You're going to test for it, then you're going to try sending it, which is actually called filling rather than sending. And if you're basically send that energy from this like particular, like if you send it to another block, you generally want to empty the amount that you just sent. So basically, you would just place this down. You make sure the coordinates are for the same block that it's running from. And then you would basically send it. So the story is not too much different from actually cables themselves. So if we wanted to create a cable, then all we really need to do is this condition right here. Uh, this part for the generation is not required. So we would basically just create the condition for trying to send it on those particular directions or the fluid itself. And then we would basically passively try to send it to that block and actually machine use is a lot simpler all we need to do is actually extract the energy so we don't even need um this particular like the other blocks and stuff like that we can just um extract a set amount from the block itself so we would basically go ahead and say extract one and then for every tick, then it's going to drain one energy as long as the machine is on. This would basically require energy to go through the pipes and get to the machine and then basically drain from there. So hopefully this makes a little bit of sense of how the different components work. Obviously, generation of energy is a lot more complicated than basically a machine use, but it basically uses the same logic all across the board. If you understand the foundational part for actually generating energy you're not going to have any problems basically making it uh actually send it and drain it so basically that's all that you really need to know about um actually sending fluid or um actual forge energy um again the conditions can be completely different you can basically set it up for maybe if it's geothermal then you might want to test if there is some sort of heat source that the block is connected to. Um, it could be lava next to it or maybe a magma cube or something like that. And then it could generate technically heat from that. And then you would basically generate the energy from those particular blocks. And then you could basically turn it into or basically send it to another location, which the pipes would just try to send it to other locations and then you would eventually get it to a machine where the machine would use it and um, to kind of showcase what all that would look like um, cables and your energy would use this one and then the last one would be basically just extracting a static number for the same block so if we wanted to extract maybe like one energy then we would basically have it drain that particular one. This would be for machines. This would be for cables and generation. And then this would be for generation specifically. So hopefully that makes sense. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.